a good thing, and this morning on Medical Monday, an even better thing. Our topic is going to be diabetes because this is Diabetes Month. Nina, good morning. Good morning. Thanks for having me. I've been asking you a ton of questions already, and I know that you, you probably got more now to answer all my questions, but just, just to, to fill folks in, what is diabetes? Diabetes in simplest terms is a chronic disorder of metabolism. Your body can't process the food properly for energy and that leads to high blood sugar. Well, now most of us when we think about diabetes we think strictly in terms of sugar. Is that really what it comes all, uh, all comes down to is sugar? It's not really just sugar though Larry because when people think of sugar that's what they think of as table sugar and it has a lot to do with carbohydrates and that can be fruit, milk, starches, starchy vegetables or sweets and you know after I say that all of a sudden everybody's like oh my gosh what can I eat but it doesn't mean you can't eat that it's just you have to determine how much you can eat and how often you can eat. I asked you a while ago what the perfect number is for for blood sugar and I think you said now it's 100 or less 100 or less mm -hmm. so anything over that uh, now would be considered a problem right? between 101 and 125 and these are all fasting numbers that I'm giving you and when I say fasting that means that you cannot eat for about 8 to 10 hours prior to the test so usually it's a first morning test from 101 to 125 it's what we call pre-diabetes now not high enough to give that diagnosis but still putting you on a path to trouble now, a lot of folks who are diabetic know that they are but we may suspect that we've got a problem or worry that we might have a problem. How can we tell? What are the signs? What are the symptoms? What should we be looking for and certainly aware of that uh, could indicate a problem? Good question. One of the first symptoms of high blood sugar is fatigue. And we look at people who will go to the doctor and complain of always being tired. We also look at frequent urination and of course if you're going to the bathroom a lot the next symptom of high sugar is often dehydration or thirst and unfortunately people grab all the wrong things. They'll grab sweet tea and Mountain Dew and Coke and orange juice and Pepsi and, and that is the wrong thing. Yes sir, it's, it's the water that we need to be drinking. My question is it seems that so much of us associating who is diabetic has to do with whether or not they're overweight and really that not is not necessarily the only thing that is a trigger. You're right, it's not necessarily the only thing although we know that lifestyle is a huge factor when it comes to diabetes and our lifestyle right now for many people is sedentary so as the United States gets bigger and again with North Carolina we rank eighth in the nation for obesity and 50% of the people in our state that have diabetes are obese. Debbie, whole grains, good fruits and vegetables, that's really important. And if you don't have diabetes, your body should be able to process that real well. It's the people that have elevated blood sugar and their body can't work this real well, that's when we start seeing the problems. That's when the blood sugar starts to go up and high blood sugar can lead to complications. Now is this reversible? Pre-diabetes? diagnosis or a diabetic diagnosis. Can we reverse that chronic um, disease basically? Once you've been given that diagnosis of diabetes, I would say it's going to always be there. What you can do is normalize blood sugar, but it's always going to be sitting on your shoulder whispering in your ear, Debbie, saying, I'm going to get you if you're not careful. When you have that pre-diagnosis, pre-diabetes diagnosis, there are many things that you can do. You can change your lifestyle. You can get out there and shake your booty and start moving around and, and um, watch that food and things that, that can really contribute to obesity. Again, the more you shake it, I guess, the better off you are. Absolutely. <laughs> you, need, you need the exercise. It is. My, my first grandchild was born in the year 2000, and they tell us that children that were born that year have a one in three chance of developing diabetes if current trends continue. That's scary. Now, this is because kids are not eating the right things. They're not exercising the right amount, uh, just not doing the right stuff. As you point out, it all goes back to lifestyle. It is. You have to maintain some balance and consistency in that lifestyle. And this is true for kids too? Absolutely. Because diabetes progresses, it gets harder to control over time. You have a failure of your pancreas to really put out the insulin. 
diabetes is the end product, we'll say, um, of a failure of, of the pancreas to make that insulin. And insulin is the key to all of this. So I would say when blood sugar can't be kept in good control in spite of good healthy eating habits, staying active, and taking all those oral agents that your doctor would prescribe, when you've got poor control, you need to go to insulin. One of the things that I've always been really confused about with diabetes is I've known teenagers who are very healthy, very athletic, and it turns out they're diagnosed with diabetes. So it's not that they're not eating well, and they certainly are exercising, so how can that be? Mm -hmm. That's type 1 diabetes. Typically, if you see a teenager like that, you're looking at, at um, juvenile onset, the type 1 diabetes, and what happens there is the pancreas just does not make the insulin, so you have to have the insulin to live. And oftentimes these children are thin and active. Would you call it an epidemic uh, here in America or right now? I don't know the true definition of epidemic, Larry, but all I can tell you is that when this program that I run started in 1995, we said, oh no, 12 million people in the United States have diabetes, and now we're at 24 million and counting. So that's double in 15 years. Can you live with diabetes for a long time oh. if you are managing it well? You can live a long, healthy life. Many of my support group members have had diabetes. Um, one lady, 64 years so far. So yes, you absolutely can live a long, healthy life with diabetes, but it's all a matter of choices and consequences. It's more complicated than just that fancy monitor we see him advertise on television, because I've got to ask you, we see uh, the actor Wilford uh, Brunley and, and folks uh, advertising uh, products uh, to treat your, your uh, diabetes and, and your sugar problems. We see all the fancy monitors that cause no pain, uh, and, and really easy to do. How do you feel about these things? Is this just uh, uh, gimmicks or, or is there some substance to it? There's a little bit of substance and a lot of hype, unfortunately, Larry. You asked me earlier about, well, you know, the, the meters that you don't have to poke. You gotta get blood from somewhere. So whether or not it's your finger, or your arm, or somewhere, you, you gotta poke something. And I am a proponent of staying local, so I would much rather see people get there diabetes supplies from relatively local. What can we do now to prevent the onset of diabetes as we age? Maintain good healthy eating habits would be the first thing I would tell you. you know, look for fresh fruits and vegetables, whole grains, try to stay local with, with purchasing things, stay away from processed foods. There's too many things in boxes out there now that are half eaten up for you and your body doesn't even have to digest them. So work on, work on getting things that you learned from your grandparents were good for you. That would be the first thing I would tell you. And get out there and walk or move around. You don't have to have any fancy exercise equipment. You can walk in the mall.